When you think of France, perhaps the first thing that comes to mind is its famous wine. Yet in recent years, the industry has experienced many problems and prices have not been as high as they once were. What is it that determines the price the French producer gets for his wine? Whether it's profitable for him to produce at all depends upon a whole variety of factors, the climate, labor costs, the quality of the grapes, for example. But it's clear that the price he receives is crucially important. Alors en ce moment, c'est le Pinot Noir et à Saint-Hippolyte, l'appel au rouge de Saint-Hippolyte. C'est la spécialité de la localité. D'accord. Le jus, le jus est blanc. Le jus, il est blanc de ce raisin. Alors on égrappe, on a une machine pour égrapper. Et euh, on le macère trois jours, alors ça veut dire ça fermente trois jours avec la baie. Et c'est la baie qui donne la couleur au... La baie, c'est-à-dire la peau... This la farmer peau, is growing grapes that are very similar to those of other producers in the region. And therefore, he has no control over price and must accept whatever price is given by the market. So we can analyze this market using our model of perfect competition and determine the price that all producers, including this farmer, have to accept. Agricultural markets will require us to understand the supply of a product and the demand for a product. Each of these can be represented by a linear equation, and if we understand the relationship between them, we can understand how the equilibrium price gets determined the price which the farmer will use to make his decision about how much to produce. The equilibrium price is the price where the quantity that all suppliers wish to produce equals the quantity that all consumers wish to purchase. We'll also consider the effect that agricultural subsidies have on this farmer. Would these make him better off? Would he then produce more wine? We'll also look at the market for labour and ask, how do we determine equilibrium in the labour market? And we'll also see how to analyse equilibrium when governments intervene in the form of minimum wage legislation, or when trade unions are present and are able to raise the minimum wage above the equilibrium level. But if we're going to do that, we first need to check our understanding of how to solve when there are more than one linear equation. In economics, we often have more than one linear equation related in some way, and we need to know how to solve them. Let's see how this is done, and then we'll illustrate with some examples. Now, there's more than one way to do this, but we'll do it here by substitution. We've taken two linear equations. The first one is 2x minus y equals 4. And the second one is 3x minus 2y equals 5. Now for each of these equations, that'll be true for some values of x and y, but not all. But what values do x and y take when both 1 and 2 are true? Well, if we have two equations and two unknowns, here x and y, we can find that out. It's not difficult. If we rearrange equation 1, we get y equals 2x minus 4. Now, if we substitute that into equation 2, we get 3x minus 2 times 2x minus 4 equals 5. 3x minus 4x plus 8 equals 5. We got that by multiplying out the brackets. So x equals 3. Now, if we substitute this value for x into either of the equations, let's do it for equation 1, we can find out the value for y. 6 minus y 
equals 4, so y equals 2. So we've been able to find the value of x and y by solving these two linear equations. It might help if we represent this graphically. So let's plot these two equations on a diagram. We just take two pairs of coordinates for equation 1 and we plot the line 2x minus y equals 4. Now do the same for equation 2. We plot two pairs of coordinates for the equation 3x minus 2y equals 5. And you can see that there is a point where the two lines cross. Well, solving the equations is the equivalent of plotting where those two lines cross. It's at that point that you can see that x takes the value of 3 and y takes the value of 2. So we can solve for more than one linear equation and we can do it graphically, but we can also do it mathematically. And that's a more powerful way to do it. It becomes very difficult to do it graphically when we have more than two linear equations, but relatively simple to extend our maths to solving for where there's more than two linear equations. Usually, but not always, there'll be a unique value for x and y when we solve. Sometimes there may be no solution at all. For example, if the two lines are parallel, that is to say, if both lines have the same slope, then they won't cross. But most often, when we solve for two linear equations, we'll have a unique value for x and y.